I want to start at the beginning. Uh, this film is written and directed by Jeff Nichols, who made Shotgun Stories, which you were also in. Uh, when did he come to you and tell you he was making this film? And when did he actually say, by the way, I want you to be the lead? He gave me the script originally just to read, uh, to get my input. Um, he wasn't sure who he wanted to play Curtis. Um, and it was very personal personal script for him, a uh, personal story, and he just wanted the first person who looked at it to be a friend. Uh, and I read it, and I loved it, and I told him so. Um, but we didn't, we actually didn't talk about it for a, a while. Uh, and then when, when he did call about it, it was, it was very out of the blue and uh, very short notice. He said, I, I've got the financing, and that's gonna happen like in a couple of months. And do uh, you wanna do it? And I said, well, sure. I, I think, you know, I think honestly, part of the, the problem was maybe um, he knew he wanted to have a little bit bigger budget than he had, because shotgun stories cost about $5. <laughs> and he wanted, he wanted more than $5 for a second film. And he wasn't sure that I might be able to get 10 or 20, but, yeah. not but uh, I guess, I caught up, and uh, it all worked out. Okay, but Jeff is your friend, but you're you're also an actor, mm -hmm. and when you're reading this great script with this great male role, there's no part of you that, that starts to angle for that job early on. Well, no, I mean honestly, it's very intimidating. It's like, uh, well, I, I love this script, but whoever has to play that part. I don't envy that poor son. It's going to be really difficult. <laughs> and Shay, uh, tell us how the script first came to you and what attracted you to the role of Dewar. This time last year, we were coming toward the end of Boardwalk season one, and we were bottom of the pool spent, man, emotionally. Um, I mean, it's a heavy, that's an eight month heavy grind. And I remember Jeff said he wanted me to do this, and he had written this thing for Michael and I, and, um, or had us in mind, I think. And, I went to Mike and I said, I don't, th I don't think I can, I don't think I can do it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm spent with, uh, and he said, no, you're coming. <laughs> you, you're coming to Cleveland. We're going to do this thing. And I was like, I, I'm coming. And he said, you know, so I mean, didn't have to talk him in too much, but yeah. So that's just, it kind of was an organic, natural process. And, you know, you didn't, you don't pine for the role. You don't, you know, if it, Fits and, and Jeff knows, and Jeff knows, you know, he's a special guy. Actually, can I ask about how you two first met? I guess was it on Tigerland, and, and did you find that you brought that natural chemistry and friendship to your roles in this film? We met at we met at Camp Blanding because uh, yeah. we all did this uh, boot camp um, together for Tigerland, mm -hmm. so we got to know each other. Everybody got to know each other pretty quick. Uh, doing that, um, but yeah, I think it was incredibly important. I can't imagine, uh, you know, th th creating these kind of relationships, uh, particularly in this environment, a low-budget film where everything goes by so quickly. I mean, if, if we didn't have the the fact that we had that going into it, uh, just made it a, a whole lot easier because there wasn't any time to, you know go hang out, go for walks together. We just had to show up and uh, figure it out. You normally go for walks together? Yeah. yeah. Walks in the woods. You couldn't do a lot of research on, on this particular film. You had to just drop in because, I mean, he couldn't be out ahead of him and know too much about what was going on with him as Curtis. You know, this, these symptoms and he, you know, he, and he had to just be in the moment and I, I, I was the same way. Well, one of the keep it really simple with Dewar, you know, and, and, and so it, it helped immensely you know, to walk on there and just, you know, we, we have a second hand anyway, and so, um, so it, yeah, it, it helped out a lot, I think. And this is obviously heavy material. Was it a difficult shoot, or were you able to have some fun? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was really fun shooting that scene in the driveway. Yeah, that was, a, I mean, that was a lot of fun. Remember that dog? They had a, some wild dog on a rope in the yard next door. 
Yeah. And we kept trying to do that damn scene, and right. that dog would not shut up. <laughs> and, and the guy who owned the house had like, a oh. gun or something. And like anybody that walked in his yard, oh, they were throwing like sandwiches at the yeah, dog. They, they, and Michael and I were drinking just a little bit to get in there. To get the feel happen. It was my kind of emotional scene. It was really about, you know, about what, what the crux of what this, who we are, you know, and what. And uh, the love that they have for each other, and, and, and this, like he said, this dog. Every time I would go to, you know, really sing, roof, 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 and you can't use the take at all. So we were, and we all went wrong, but we had to get the shot. There was no going back. There's no, you know. So the guy comes up. Somebody comes up with this genius plan to make peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Right about that. Yeah. So I'm staying in. I'm trying to stay in, and he's being amazing, and we're in the thing, and they go, okay, listen, we're gonna run over, we're gonna throw the dog a sandwich, <laughs> and then start, you guys be ready. So that might have been the most difficult scene to shoot logistically with the dog. Uh, what was the most difficult scene for each of you, I, I guess I would say from an emotional place? Well, that Lions Club scene was gonna happen. Really? Like, they, they, like Tom had some fish, be in the movie. Yeah, well, for, I mean, we had, when we started, we probably had 20 little, little children in there. I mean, I knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. we, you know, they, they had no idea. I knew this thing was going to get heavy. And, you know, it did. And it, 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 just, it was a palpable reaction when he finally, we went at it. He flipped the table, and it was, you know, he and I have a trust, and that's where. You know, you, you have a love and trust, and you can go anywhere. You know what I mean, as actors. And so we knew we were going to. You know, I said, bring it, whatever we need to do. And he did. The first take was people. You know, had to leave. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was that intense. Were they actors, extras, or they were locals? Yeah, kind of locals. I mean, this is a community uh, that doesn't see a lot of film production. <laughs> Any film production. I think there was a shock that we were making a film there, um, but uh, but they were good sports about it. Now um, I'm curious. Once again, uh, you know, you have some very difficult moments in this film. Were you able to leave it at the end of the day, or are you guys the kind of actors that, that sort of take your characters home with you? Uh, I'm too tired at the end of the day. Honestly, I mean, for me, it's like you save your energy. It's like you know those video games where the guys can shoot big energy balls out of their hands, you know, like Mortal Kombat, you know, like, so it's like, that's what it is, like, you save it, and you shoot it out, and it's gone, you know, it's, and then you're just tired, I mean, I don't, it's not like I would go home and be like, oh, there's a damn storm coming. <laughs> well, I want to talk about um, some of the other casting in the film, specifically the amazing Chastain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know she's in like nine movies this year, but when you shot this, she was completely unproven on film. Did you have any say in the casting? And, and what was it? Like? I was against it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't. I didn't have any say in it. We showed up, and um, you know, that's very difficult again to create that relationship. You know, you just show up. You're supposed to be husband and wife, and you have a child, and all this. But she's just got such a big heart, you know, and she just radiates this warmth and generosity of her spirit, you know, and totally vulnerable all the time. There's no firewall there, you know, she's just, you know, that's the way she lives. Uh, so I think it translates into her work. She loves you and she pretty much kind of lets you get away with a lot that you might not expect. Yeah, she she was conscientious of that, you know. She she thought about that a lot, and like specifically when, what Samantha wanted or needed or was asking for, in every scene was was very different, you know. And and Jeff didn't want it to be that way either, you know. And 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 Jeff really made this film about uh, about marriage, you know. It's not just about Curtis. Because if Curtis just lived alone in an apartment complex somewhere, it wouldn't really be much of a movie. 
I read a great, um, oh no, actually, Jeff, Jeff said it, that anxiety is born out of having something to lose. Exactly, yeah. I thought that was yeah. beautiful and terrifying. Yeah, he's smart, smart fellow. <laughs> it's a very sh strange situation this movie puts you in because in a way you're kind of rooting for Curtis to be right because you don't want him to be insane which means you're sort of rooting for this apocalypse. <laughs> Did you consider that when you were playing this role? And to me, the, the visions and, um, and what Curtis is, is, is experiencing is, uh, I find it very poetic. It's not so much like a literal examination of deterioration or mental illness or these things. It's just more, it, it, to me, it's like Jeff wrote a poem about something that was happening there. And it's this this movie, you know, and and that it doesn't even really matter at the end of the day whether he's right or not. That's not the point. And the point is when you how do you live in this world that is so fragile? How how do you cope with that? If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. We just have time for a couple right there in the middle. There are two different levels. There's the, the dreams he's having and then the waking visions, you know, or the auditory hallucinations. Um, and I think those auditory hallucinations start when he starts taking the pills and, um, and he finally gets his first good night of sleep and he thinks that maybe everything's going to be okay. I don't think the point of the ending of the film is to say that Curtis was right and that, the, that there's an apocalypse coming. I mean, the, to me, the experience at the end of the film is seeing Curtis finally sharing this experience with his family because the whole movie he's been alone. And he finally, he gives up. And he does everything everybody wants him to do. He goes to the psychiatrist. He's willing to go to this hospital. And he, he's a defeated man, you know. But, but he's also hopeful because he thinks, well, maybe if I do all these things, then I will, then I will be fixed and I will be able to go back to my family. But that's, to me, what's so beautiful about the end of the film is that you know, anybody in, these, in this situation, there's, there's two sides to it. It's like, well, Curtis, you need to do this, this, and this. But there's also, if you love Curtis, if you love me, then you, you have to understand me. And you can't stuff it away, and it goes away forever. And that's, to me, what the end of the film is about, is that it's, a, it's an act of love amongst the family, it's the family seeing what Curtis has been struggling with the, the whole film. Everything is shot on location in Ohio. Like I said, Grafton was the town we were based in. Uh, we also went to Elyria, Ohio, uh, Oberlin, Ohio. These are all little towns just outside of Cleveland. You know, the first thing that has to happen is that I have to open that door, and that's about me doing this for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like what she says in the movie, this is what it means to, to love us, is you opening that door. If you don't open that door, then uh, how can we be together anymore? Um, and then it's the yin and the yang of that is the, the scene at the end where it's, where she does see and acknowledge the storm that's coming over the ocean. So it's a simple act of, you know, overcoming this demon that he's, that he's been struggling with. I mean, it's ironic because he's put so much work into the shelter and by the end it really is very functional. You know, they could stay down there for a while, but, um, that's obviously unnecessary if there's not a storm, and obviously not what either Samantha 
or Hannah want. You know, they, they want to get out of there. For me, this was all about really, I guess I told you the thought of going to work back with my was I had forgotten about several things we've even done together. I mean, it's just a natural thing, but I mean, just to be, but the piece always struck me like a, you know, like a shepherd piece, like, like Lie of the Mind, if you've ever read that, where you find the character at the end, if I remember correctly, and he just says there's a fire in the snow. And I remember when I was younger, when I, when I, did, I did the play, and I, I, I didn't know how satisfying it was, you know, to not have, especially now we require that in every film that you see. It has to have a beginning, and have, you know, it has to have answers. And so uh, to this, I thought this was just a beautiful way to, to end this, and whatever it is to you, it ends up being. As, as much as Jeff wants it, I mean, Jeff really wants the film to be interpreted by whoever sees it. You know, he, the ending is ambiguous and strange, and it's that way because that's what he wanted. Before we go, not, not to, I don't want to embarrass Michael, but I mean, what you all saw, I said this at Sundance, I said, what you saw, what you're seeing, to me, in my opinion, um, you're seeing like a once in a generational type of actor. He's, he's that good. Um, you, they don't they don't grow on the trees. They don't come around very often, and so you have to really. I think this these you people really appreciate that, especially from your uh, comments. But he is as good as I've ever been around, and I've I've been lucky, not good, to be around some really good ones. You know, so you know I feel just as uh, special sitting up here with him and acting with him as you know as you could watching this stuff as well. As, you know, Thanks so much for being here for being a great audience. Thank you guys. Thank you.